In this video, we're going to be covering the formatting toolbar and each of the options that are available on it from left to right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the styles and formatting window. You can open this by clicking on the leftmost button. Alternatively, you hit F11 on your keyboard. Now, styles and formatting is a very useful tool within OpenOffice. We'll be covering this dialog box more in a future video, but for now it's just important to know you can change the paragraph styles, character styles, which would refer to changing a few characters at a time individually. For instance, you could give it a hyperlink style. The frame styles, which would mostly refer to graphics like this one I have right here, for instance, it's currently set to graphics because it is an image, but I could make it a frame style, which gives it a border instead. You also have page styles, which you would apply to an entire page by selecting the style and then using the fill mode, click on the page you want. And then, oh, suddenly down here, you can see that it is a left page style. And I can set that back to default by doing the same thing. Uh, I have to select default, of course. And then, bam, there you go. Uh, now you'll notice with that particular style, the margin changed. So that's one thing you can note. Last on the list of styles is the list styles formatting, and from here you can change the style of a bulleted or non-bulleted list, which is actually one of the other elements on the formatting toolbar. We'll get to that one in a bit, though. The second section of the formatting toolbar is the apply style edit text and dropdown. With this, you can quickly change between different kinds of paragraph styles by having your paragraph selected or just have the cursor somewhere inside the paragraph go up to the menu and change it to what you need. For instance, default, which is actually not what I had there. Default uh, in terms of open office writer would be 12 point times new Roman and left aligned. Or you could set it to a heading such as heading one or heading two. Now, when you actually do specify something as a heading, it's actually very nice because uh, what it will do is make a reference to that in other areas like the previous mentioned navigator. You can see here that I could navigate to that formatting toolbar heading just by double clicking it inside of the navigator. And I'll demonstrate that right now. There we go. <laughs> Next, we have the font name edit text and drop down, which allows you to change your font inside of OpenOffice. And this also applies to the currently selected paragraph. So there are many, many, many different fonts you can use within OpenOffice and a lot more you can install on your computer that you can find online if you're willing to go out there and look. I won't go into which fonts you should or shouldn't use here, but I would probably recommend you choose one that's at least readable by whoever your audience is for any kind of document you're working on. Now to the right of that is changing the font size with the edit text. You can also click the drop down to get some very specific and standard sizes for different fonts within OpenOffice. The alternative to that is to type in the font size you want. For instance, you could do a weirdly specific 47.65 font size, and that would actually round up to 47.7. So it rounds to the 10th decimal, but beyond that, you can set it to basically any number you want, even 543, if that's the kind of font size you want. To the right of that is the bold, italicize, and underline buttons. Now, you can also bold, italicize, and underline with Control B, Control I, and Control U, uh, respectively. But it's usually very simple just to click on the buttons here. If it's clicked in, then your text is bolded, or italicized, or underlined. For instance, I'll, it's already bolded because it's a heading one. I'll click italicize, and then I'll click underline, and bam, we have all three of those. And you can combine them in whichever order you want. Maybe you want bold and underline. Maybe you just want bold and italicize. Maybe you just want italicize because you're writing a book title or something like that. Whatever you need, it's up there, and that's a very common tool to be using inside of any writing application. So nothing too out of the ordinary there. Now, next to the bold, italicize, and underline tools are the alignment options. Now, this, as we mentioned in previous videos, you can align left, break. Now, next to bold, italicize, and underline are the alignment tools, of which you have align left, align center, align right, and, and break. Now, next to the bold, italicize, and underline tools are the alignment tools. Now, this will include align left, centered, right, and justified. Uh, as we talked about in previous videos, Control L is the shortcut for align left, E for centered, R for right, and J for justified. Now I'll go ahead and demonstrate these down here on this paragraph down here. Break. 
A line left, as you can see here, the text starts writing on the left and goes to the end until there's no more space to add a full complete word. Centered will fill up the entire line, except that any extra white space is evenly distributed between the left and the right. And the align right is the reverse of the align left in that it'll go all the way to the end, but all of the white space is going to be on the left. Now, in the case of justified, what it will actually do is make an effort so that every single character space is actually filled up with some text. And how it does this is by stretching your text out as needed to fill the extra white space. You'll see here, if I go back to a line left, that there is a little bit less spacing between each character on lines that had white space. But if I go to justified, then that white space gets increased to fill the entire line. Past that, we have the numbering and bulleted lists. And these allow you to create lists inside of OpenOffice. And you can do this in one way by having pre-selected text that you want to turn into a list and hitting numbering on slash off, or you can hit bulleted on slash off if you want to have the dots or other bulleted symbol instead of numbers. Now, you'll notice here that it's a little bit off, and I think that's just because of a extra invisible character, which we can delete here by clicking to the left of this text and hitting delete, left of the text, hit delete, and now it looks proper. So things to note about having a numbered or bulleted list is that it will automatically increment as soon as you hit enter on the last part of the list. So I hit enter, it creates number four. I hit enter, it creates number five, and so on and so forth. You can easily add new list items. Now, if you want to turn all of these off because you don't want it to be in a list anymore, you can simply go back up here and click numbering on slash off, and it returns to a normal paragraph. Of course, it works almost exactly the same way with bulleted lists on and off, except that there are no numbers, so it's a different style of listing items. But whenever you have these lists selected, you have your paragraphs in list select mode, you're going to get this list toolbar to pop up uh, somewhere on your screen, may pop up over here, may actually be a separate entity, uh, depending on how you had things set up. But we're going to actually cover lists in more detail in a future video, so don't worry about it too much for now. I just wanted to point out that it's on the toolbar. Now, when you're writing your documents, or possibly an ebook in OpenOffice Writer, you may want to actually increase the indent of one of your paragraphs so that it will stand out more. One example of this might be if you're quoting someone on blogs to indent a quote is very common practice. So if we want to increase the indention on our paragraph, all we need to do is click increase indent here. And when we do that, you'll notice that these two symbols on the ruler actually move over to the right to represent those indentions uh, on our paragraph. So another way we could increase indention is to move the top arrow here for the first line only, and the bottom arrow to move the entire paragraph. You will notice that when I move the bottom paragraph, the top indention also moves the same distance. So if I want the top indention to match the bottom one again, I have to drag that back over here to the left. Now, if we want to return the indention to normal, all we need to do is select all the text and hit decrease indent a couple times, and it should return to a zero inch indent. Now, last on the toolbar, we have font color, highlighting, and background color. If we want to change any of them, we can just select a text, paragraph, or an entire page, click on the drop-down menus, and choose a color from it. For instance, we can change the color of the font from black to cyan. And then, bam, there you go. Now, you'll notice it's uh, what you have selected rather than the entire paragraph. You can select an entire paragraph if you want to change the whole paragraph itself. Now with highlighting, this will put a background color to the text we have currently selected. So if we wanted to give this a yellow highlighting, we just click on highlighting with it selected. Of course, it's yellow by default, which is the same way people do it in real life, but you can change it to any color you want as well. So we could have purple highlighting if that's your thing. Now with background color, if you don't have anything selected, it will give a background to the entire paragraph. The difference between highlighting an entire paragraph and adding a background to an entire paragraph is that the background will go line by line, including the portion that doesn't actually have text, whereas the highlight will only 
add a color to the text itself. So if I select everything here and give it a yellow highlighting, it doesn't actually give anything to this little extra white space here, or blue space now. So that's the formatting toolbar in a nutshell. In the next video, we'll be going into customizing your toolbars and even creating your own fully custom toolbar from scratch. See you then.